Hey everybody, I'm Ken Brandt and I'm an artist. So today's video is the second painting in what I'm calling my American Icon series and it's this one here um, which is titled Martini Weenie and I have a friend at work to thank for helping me come up with that title. I was telling him the ideas of what I was going to do for this painting and Martini Weenie came out of his mouth and I loved it. So thank you very much Brendan for helping me come up with the title for that painting, for this painting I should say. And if you recall in an earlier video I did this painting. This is the first painting in the American Icon series and I have a few ideas in my head for some uh, following paintings to continue with this series so look forward to those in future videos. I know I am and I hope you are as well. So without uh, any further ado, um, oh but first uh, before I uh, uh, we go to the video. I would like to give a shout out to Bruce Habowski. Um, he is a plein air painter and he does a, a lot of landscape work and interior work in his studio. Uh, he's an exceptional painter. I think you should check out uh, Bruce Habowski Studios uh, on YouTube and um, he has uh, uh, quite a few videos. Uh, give him some love. Subscribe to his channel and because uh, we're all just artists trying to get ourselves out there and become known to the public so someday we are famous artists world renowned so make sure you check them out and uh, give them some love and so without uh, uh, without any more uh, we'll go right to the video thanks I started with the background color using Viridian Green with a mixture of raw umber to darken it I chose this color because I know that this will contrast nicely with the satiny red fabric I'm using for my setup on this still life. I was careful, um, careful to go around the objects and try not to get too much of this background color into the other areas, especially around the stem of the martini glass. For the fabric, I chose to use various shades of alizarin crimson, quinacridone magenta, and cadmium red. The fabric has a sheen to it, and it was important that I was able to show the different colors in the material that bring out the shiny quality of this fabric. Because of the low lighting I used on my setup, I didn't have a lot of areas where the light bounced off the fabric except for the edge on the right side. For this area, I simply mix some titanium white into some quinacridone magenta to create the desired effect and used a titanium white with a very slight mixture of the quinacridone for the brightest highlights. I make sure to never use straight white on any highlighted area in any of my paintings because in life, the color white really doesn't exist. Even a sheet of paper isn't truly a straight white. But I have learned that you can make something appear white in reference to what other colors use around that area. Again, I was very careful to keep my edges of the martini glass unpainted so I could go into them with a lighter color without worrying about it mixing with colors along the outer edges. This isn't an impossible situation to fix, but it's so much easier if you don't have to go over those areas over and over again to eliminate any unwanted color mixing. On my hot dog, I used some relish, onions, and mustard for the garnishment. Uh, funny story here, I wanted some ketchup on the hot dog also, but when I went to the fridge to get the items I needed, I discovered the wife had used all the ketchup the night before and some french fries, so we didn't have any. I thought about just uh, painting some in, but it is much, a much better painting if you paint what you see. Always paint what you see. 
Then when you're done, you can make changes after you think it's needed, but only if you think it will make for a better painting. The relish and the onions have a translucent appearance to them, and my approach to this was to use some lighter colors in key areas to try to bring out that translucent look, and at the same time make the relish look somewhat wet. I just kept getting over it, uh, kept going over it until um, I was happy with it. For the mustard, I used some cadmium yellow, lightened with some titanium white until it matched the color on my still life. I had mixed my color and put some on a palette knife and hold it up to the hot dog until the colors looked pretty much the same. The roll was a bit trickier to get the colors right. It's like a yellow, but it's kind of brown, and in the shaded areas I could see some dark gray. I had looked back and forth at my still life in my painting, and I could also see some light gray along the lighter edges of the bun. For something that looks like an easy subject matter, it can sometimes get tricky. I've learned to trust my eyes and add the colors that I see, and most of the time it looks great. For those times when it doesn't, I would just go over it. Problem solved. I went with a mixture of yellow ochre and raw umber to get the desired color for my roll. I was quite happy with the look after it was painted. For the martini glass, I used some light shades of Payne's Gray along the edges. And I knew that I wanted to have some soft edges on the left side of the glass as well as along the far edge of the base. A lot of times when I am painting a glass or a bottle, <clears throat> I end up losing the perspective on the shapes of the glass because of overlap from painting along the outside edges. It happens every time no matter if my drawing is spot on or not. And this is where the lost edges comes in handy. I've learned that with glass, it isn't important that you outline it perfectly. You can achieve the look of the glass by actually not painting the shape but using highlights in key areas and letting the mind fill in what it thinks it is seeing. This is something I'm still working on and discover new ways of doing this every time I paint this kind of subject matter. Now here I'm just refining my edges and fixing spots where there was any unwanted overlap. I also softened the edges on the table on the left side so it blended more into the background. As you recall from the beginning, I did not tone my canvas for this painting. So I had a lot of smaller spots that you can't really see in this video that were not covered with any color. And I found myself going over a lot of these spots with a small brush to fill them in. Um, with a toned canvas, I wouldn't have had this problem. And in some cases, I would leave some of the toned canvas showing through on purpose for some interest. But with a white canvas, it's almost annoying seeing spots of white showing through the painting. And this is a decision I make before every painting. On a larger painting, I would go with a toned canvas every time. Now before I was finished with this painting, I was looking at it and the mustard did look a bit flat. And uh, when I added highlights in certain areas, it really helped it pop out. Um, all in all, I was very pleased with this painting at the end of it. And, uh, it really looked nice.
hot dog is just merely a combination of uh, phthalo yellow green and alizarin crimson to make a flesh tone and if you'll notice in the back on the top of the hot dog I softened that edge so it blended into the background So thank you so much for watching. I hope I was helpful and gave you some ideas for your next painting. I know I learned something new with each and every painting that I do. So be sure to leave a like and a comment and share this video with fellow artists. Also make sure you hit that subscribe button and become a part of our artist community. And until the next painting, enjoy.